And so I have bought the second book in the Darkest Rising sequence. Hello fellow book questers, it is I, Aaron the Book Quester, and today I got this great awesome book, The Dark is Rising, the second book in the Dark is Rising sequence by Susan Cooper herself, Newberry on her book, and well, let's get right on to it. Will Stanton is the son of the local jeweler, and he has had a good life. He is the seventh son of the seventh line, and on his 11th birthday, Something strange things happen. A man that seems to be a tramp is walking around around his house. Birds and animals are scared of him. And something really, really strange is happening. People around him are treating him differently. And especially some of them have been giving him weird pieces of advice that shouldn't even apply to him. And on his birthday, he wakes up and he finds every single one of his family members seemingly frozen in time. And when he goes outside, he meets a man who calls himself the Rider. And he tries to break bread and eat breakfast with Will. However, however, a man, John Whalen Smith, stops the Rider from breaking bread with Will. Because that is one of the tricks. Because the rider serves the Dark Lords. And the, and the forces of the Dark are very prominent. And they are rising in power. And Will was the sign seeker. The person who had put together all of the signs. All of the magical signs. And, and used the power of those signs to defeat the Dark. And who explains this to him? Well... If you remember from the last book, Merry Man, or, or who can also be in the, identified as, Mer as Merlin, uh, most famously King Arthur's chief advisor. He is the first of the Old Ones, a be a beings of supernatural abilities who have been here since the Earth started. And Will is the last of these, this race known as the Old Ones, and he has a set of special abilities that allows him to perform magic and also he must be the one to get all of the signs and so he's and so this book consists of will's quest in order to get all of the signs that are necessary to defeat the evil the evil black the evil rider and his masters and honestly okay first off several things this book Definitely gave me more of an insight on some of the Welsh fol folklore, folklore that I don't really know about because I'm more into say Greek Roman mythology. I've heard of Norse and Egyptian mythology, but I'm not too well versed in the Welsh side of things. So I found it really interesting to meet like, for example, the hunter, her, her the hunter. Now that was a really interesting, really in interesting experience, and her hunting the darkness and good and evil and then the middle point nature which is neither good or evil and all in all i really really enjoyed the book and i do understand why it would be a new very on a book due to the fact that it implements really really good mythology into the books and also the fact that well it's just so magical i guess and it's and it just comes so well together and it's very well paced with some relaxing parts and then some attacking parts. So I really, really like it. And okay, so what I do want to say so far about this series is that it seems that the author really thought about the series as a whole rather than book by book due to the fact that first off, book one and two have different characters. Second off, it seems that they're setting up for the finale, the entire so far, the books, it's all just a setup for the last book, is what I'm feeling like. Because apparently, these objects and these magical artifacts can be used to defeat the dark. And the signs are just one of them. And in the first book, we actually found one of these objects of power, called, known as the chalice. And now they found, and now they found the signs in this book. Maybe next we could have the crystal sword, the missing crystal sword, or or something. One of the magical artifacts, anyway. And I find that 
as myself, as a person who likes to call some call himself a wannabe writer, I don't plan it out that big. Like I plan out each book and the plot lines, but I definitely don't plan it out looking at the entire series. And that's what Susan Cooper is doing, has been doing so far, and really, really impresses me. And the overall writing, as I have already mentioned, is very well paced, very good plot lines. And just something about it. It's not like it's an it's a twisting, dipping plot like Agatha Christie. It's just something about the writing inspires wonder. And that, I believe, is Susan Cooper's true gift. And all in all, great book, a must read. And like always, your book cluster, I remember book cluster. I know I didn't talk too much about the plot, but you really don't get the full effect until you actually read it, unlike several books. Thank you, and goodbye.